Okay, so we've seen a very strong sell-off in global stock markets since Wednesday. And today is looking a bit of a continuation of that. But Nigerian stock market looks like it's sidestepping. There is heavy sell-off around the world. So let's get a bit of a sense of the final trading minutes of Thursday. Ruti Mifakaijo, the CEO and trader from Enterprise Stockbrokers, is live to us from the Nigerian Stock Exchange trading floor. Ruti, it's good to have you on the program uh, this afternoon, uh, about 40 minutes to the closing, what does it look like in terms of this market still holding uh, to those positive numbers? Very small, but just there in the green. Yeah, between the last time that, that we spoke and now, there's uh, been a major change. Uh, the market has shifted from the earlier negative position of 0.09%. The market is trending positive right now at 0.16% uh, uh, positive. And uh, I think uh, we've done more volume than we actually did yesterday. Uh, the market has done over 2 billion era uh, as of now, and definitely we're going to do much more than that by the close of business as 230. So we believe that the uh, market will upkeep the positive position. And I think uh, the, uh, the situation right now is that the 32,000 basis points for the Oshai index seems to have come to stay, at least for now. So we may not see anything going down below that. So we may see positive uh, one day, negative two days, but both cases may not really be anything significant. Okay, so, so where is the bargain hunting for this green shoot right now? Wrote to me. Yeah, he's in uh, uh, um, consumer goods and also banking. Majorly Zenit Bank and um, uh, Nestle Nigeria PLC. Uh, what's the state of the banks, as it were, the banking unit? Yeah, the banking index is trending positive right now and also the consumer goods. So those are the two major determinants. And for the volume and value done, the banking index has done uh, close to 65% um, of the total value done today. At least uh, the, 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 banking, the total value done as I when I last look at the market was about 2.05 billion. And uh, the banking sector at that time had done about 1.7 billion out of the whole lot. Roti Mifakai, Joe from Enterprise Subbrokers. Thank you very much, live from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Let's take more standbys from the Bali meetings of the World Bank and the IMF. The World Bank says it's uh, looking at sub Saharan Africa to achieve economic growth of 2.7% this year. But the big story is about the new, what, or what you call the new human capital index, the HCI, which the World Bank says Nigeria's ranked 152 out of 157 countries surveyed in the areas of education, healthcare, diet, and youth mortality. Take a listen. Uh, you know, we provide quite a bit of support uh, for Nigeria in terms of the health budget, but we feel that the overall spending on health is just far too low, 0.76% of GDP. And uh, also, um, uh, the, the educational outcomes in Nigeria are very, very poor. And Nigeria is one of the most important countries uh, in not only in Africa, but uh, in the world. And so we feel that uh, it will be extremely important for Nigeria to, to really go on a different level altogether uh, in terms of their, uh, you know, their, their commitment to investing in, in, in human capital. Um, many African countries are in the red zone, if you see table two in the um, uh, in, in, in human capital project. Uh, you know, let, let me put it this way. I, I think that there is, um, uh, that, that the World Bank uh, has to take some responsibility for um, having emphasized hard infrastructure, roads, rails, um, energy for a very long time. And uh, I, I, you know, that, that changed 20 years ago, but uh, there has still been the bias that says, you know, we'll invest in hard infrastructure and then when we grow rich, we'll have enough money to invest in health and education. Uh, we're now saying that that's really a wrong, the wrong approach, that you've got to start investing in your people right now and uh, not least of which, uh, of the, all the reasons why you need to do that, uh, the, the, the rapid change in technology, the fact that many low-skilled jobs uh, will be eliminated. Now, we're, nobody's quite sure how long that will take, but a child born today in 20 years, almost certainly um, many of the low-skilled jobs today will be gone. 
And the requirement for this child to be able to learn throughout his or her entire life is simply going to get higher. The requirement, the needs are going to get higher and higher. And so uh, this is a very loud and strong message to Africa. Uh, Africa needs to invest more in health and education. Luckily, uh, because our IDA, our Fund for the Poorest Countries, is 50% uh, larger than it was three years ago, because we have more financing, we, do, we can provide more um, uh, support for African countries. But the message here is that heads of state and ministers of finance have to take responsibility. There's so much waiting for the grants to come. You know, we'll wait and the activists will help us and they'll tell the donors we need more money, we need more money. And what's happened is in many African countries, if they don't receive grant-based financing, they just simply don't spend on, on health and education. So uh, we hope that this is a loud wake-up call uh, for uh, leaders uh, throughout uh, the African continent, and especially in Nigeria. Uh, as you know, we, uh, as you may know, we, we um, uh, have been uh, committed to universal access to financial services by 2020. Now, we're following this very closely. Some of the concerns are that, um, uh, one, we can sometimes create bank accounts, but then people don't use them. The other concern is that women still are getting financial access at a much slower rate than men, and the, and the gap between men and women in terms of financial access remains. Now, a lot of this will, uh, will have to, to um, uh, uh, a, lot, a lot of this is dependent on improving access to broadband, for example. Uh, but we believe that uh, access, to, access to financial services is critically important. Again, Nigeria is a, is a country where we have a long way to go, and uh, so uh, we're very much focused on trying to improve access to financial services, but in a meaningful way, not just to give everybody an account, but to make sure that they can actually use those accounts in ways that will be helpful for individual families. The World Bank on the State of Human Capital Index and what should be done about healthcare, education, mortality rates, and uh, diet for young ones on the African continent. That's the wrap for today on Your Business Incorporated. It's time to say goodbye. I'll see you again.